Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing my latest Senate prediction where I think every single state is going to go for 2024. If you guys do enjoy the video please hit that like button and subscribe and make sure you follow Twitter and join the discord in the description down below. And so for the safe Republican states I'm going to fill out Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, Nebraska and the special election now for whatever reason Nebraska there is a poll that has the independent up by two but it is quite an old poll and I don't really think that's going to materialize into anything maybe the race gets under 15 but either way even if it's under 15 but above 10 it'll probably still be a safe margin so I would characterize Nebraska as a safe state Missouri same thing it's probably going to go safe including tennessee and mississippi same goes for indiana and west of virginia and so that puts you know republicans at 48 seats and then from here if you have you know california washington going over 10 points for the democrats you don't have you have hawaii going you're also going to have you know delaware connecticut you know massachusetts rhode island vermont going safe a democrat you know as well so that kind of leaves you guys with these states with 40 republican seats to 36 now if you notice the math for republicans is a lot better this year because republicans are basically on the offense and democrats are basically defending a bunch of seats especially you know in states like montana and ohio where Re trump is more than likely going to win by a pretty large amount in the electoral college and so it's going to be quite difficult for you know democrats to hold on there you know, on the national level with Trump at the top of the ticket, you know, if Montana's a 25 point win for Trump, I just can't see Tester even winning, you know, the state. So honestly, for this characterization, I'm actually putting Montana as safe Republican, which is a plus 10 margin. Now, a lot of you guys might think that, I, you know, I'm crazy, like, oh my God, there's no way Tester's gonna get it within 10. And there's some people who think Tester's gonna win, which I don't think he is. But Guys, if we look at this right, in 2020, Danes was up by four and three and even Bullock was actually up uh, quite a bit. But if we go ahead and we look at the 2020, you know, matchup, we'll actually see that Danes ended up winning by 10 percentage points here, which is the safe column. And right now she he is polling at around three points, you know, here. So I don't think it's that far off to say that, you know, more than likely the Democratic candidate is going to go down by more than 10 points there, which would be incumbent John Tester. And even here, you'll notice that, you know, Danes ended up winning here and Trump was on the ballot in the state in 2020 and only won it by, you know, 15 points. So the Republican here only underperformed by five, but managed to carry you know still carry the state so the diff the deviation you know the um differentiation from the senate candidate and the presidential candidate in terms of how much the ticket splitting occurs is not really that much and so i'd say that the state is probably safe republican on the map i'd also say the same thing for ohio i'm expecting ohio to be around a 15 point win for trump maybe even a little bit higher than that and so if that's the case i can't see ohio being under 10 points either now maybe it does un end up going as like a seven or eight point win for marino so maybe we will put in the likely column but it's close to being safe if you go to texas i think it is going to be likely i think that you know cruz will win re-election but i think that definitely he is going to underperform trump vastly in the state i also think rick scott will win the race by under 10 points Trump will do way better in the state than Rick Scott just because Trump is significantly more popular than Rick Scott um, in the state nationwide. If you look at Maine, I, I expect Angus King to win pretty easily, but definitely not above 10 points. I actually think the New York Senate race is probably going to be safe for Democrat, but definitely be under 15 points. It'll probably be like a 12-point win for the Democrats. Now, if you look at New Jersey and Maryland, I, it, what's quite funny about this is I'm actually putting New Jersey in the likely column. If we look at the latest poll out of New Jersey, you actually see that Bob Nunendez, the incumbent who's had a lot of scandals, is trying to run as an independent against a Democrat and a Republican. And so that puts the Democrat in a pretty, you know, contingent situation where they're only winning, winning by single digits. And so that's going to get the race closer. And if we look in Maryland which is quite interesting in Maryland, you actually have the former governor running as the Republican. 
and you have a divided Democratic field, and Hogan is leading by quite a bit in the two latest polls. However, I don't think this is necessarily going to hold up. The race, however, could be within a couple points. I actually think it's going to be like only a six or seven point win for the Democrat. Like, I think the Democrat is actually going to struggle here quite a bit since, you know, Larry Hogan is such a, you know, massive figure there. But I still think that the Democrat will win, especially with Biden on top of the ticket as well. If this was a midterm, I'd probably say that the state would actually be probably leaning in Hogan's favor, possibly even being likely if this was like a regular midterm. But since it is a presidential year and Biden's on the top of the ticket in Maryland, I think he'll be able to carry the Democratic over candidate over, even if Biden underperforms in the state. I think New Mexico will be likely, but definitely not over 10 same thing for Minnesota. I think that Klobuchar is going to be uh, very overestimated here. Now, yes, yeah, she is an electoral juggernaut, but I do think she's going to do a lot worse compared to previous years. Now, Biden is going to probably win the state by like one or two points. Klobuchar could win it upwards to like seven and nine points. So she outperforms by quite a bit, but I still think she's going to end up, you know, winning here but still by less than before. I think Pennsylvania is lean. You know, you have Bob Casey, you know, up here. And the thing with Bob Casey is that he is a very strong incumbent in the state of Pennsylvania. The latest poll has him up four points. I think the race is going to be within like a point or two with Trump winning the state by multiple points on the national level. And if you look at Arizona, I actually think that Arizona is going to go till Republican. I think Carrie Lake's going to pull it out just because of the fact that I currently have Trump winning Arizona by over five points. And so if he's really winning Arizona by that much, I just can't see him losing Arizona. Same thing for Nevada. He's probably going to carry Sam Brown over. My model currently has Trump winning the uh, Nevada by over six and a half points. So I can't see Nevada going that way either. And Wisconsin's a pretty big victory. So I think it probably tilts into Eric Hobde's column and he's also a pretty solid candidate out of there and I also think that Michigan it could be a toss-up but if I had to pick one I'd say it probably goes tilt Democratic just because you know Republicans on the state level tend to do significantly worse and what I think is going to happen is that Republicans you know on the Senate level are going to get very underestimated in polling because a lot of those lower propensity voters that vote straight ticket Republican when Trump is on the ballot are not being accounted for in these polls because of the fact they're not really answering these polls they're usually answering the general election polls and so that's where I think the electorate's going to sit. I think that there's going to be a huge underestimation of straight ticket Republican voters. Like, it doesn't even make sense for there to really be Trump Gallego voters because they're so different. Or for, you could see Trump Casey voters exist. Like, I think that would make sense. And even maybe some slight Trump slash Slotkin voters. Um, I think Trump is going to hold Eric's base for the most part. However, I do think Tammy Baldwin is a pretty good incumbent in terms of electoral strength. Now, in terms of policy and things like that, we could have a discussion about that. But in terms of her job as you know, winning the state, she does a pretty good job most of the time of winning it. And if you look at Arizona, you know, Carrie Lake barely lost the governor's race. But I think if Trump is really winning the state by over five, she probably does have a chance at narrowly winning the Senate race. And Nevada, if Trump is winning it by over six and a half, he probably is going to be carrying the Senate Republican over by like a point or two. So this is where I'm looking at in terms of the Senate map. As of right now, if you guys did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and make sure to follow the Twitter and join the Discord in the description down below. And I will see you guys very, very soon.